Hey there, welcome back to Lima Bean Living. In today's video, we are going to be making an Encanto themed birthday cake, specifically an Isabella Barbie cake. She is one of the main character's sisters. She can create flowers like whenever she wants, and that is kind of her magical power. And so I have been dying to make a Barbie cake. And when my niece's birthday came up and she loves Encanto, I offered to make her birthday cake and we agreed upon a kind of Barbie themed cake where you actually stick a Barbie inside the cake and have the cake kind of be the Barbie's dress. And it can be like done for just a variety of themes. So just if you're not planning an Encanto birthday, but you want a different character and there is a Barbie for it, you can definitely apply what I'm talking about in this video to your own party theme. So we're starting off by just making my basic chocolate cake. I have like a chocolate lover's dream cake that I have featured on this channel a few years ago, but I will link that video up above and I will put the ingredients down below in the description box for your convenience. But one thing that I really like about this cake is that you can just put really like everything into one bowl. There's not too much that gets like dirty as you're creating it. I obviously used a lot of bowls and measuring you know, devices to show you all the ingredients first, but if I was just baking this without filming it, I could just essentially put all the dry ingredients, measure them all into one bowl, and then measure out the wet ingredients into the same bowl and mix it all up. When the batter is done, it is pretty liquidy, so don't be too concerned about that. I know that sometimes there's some cake recipes where they are like a thicker consistency. This chocolate cake is definitely on the thinner side, but that results in a very moist and fluffy cake. Now I did a single batch on this day and that yielded about five of these six inch cakes. And I'm not gonna lie, I was kind of hoping that this single batch would yield like six six inch cakes because that's typically how many layers I put in like a, a tall cake. But it ended up working out and I'll explain that a little bit later. So I wrapped these cakes in saran wrap and actually threw them into the freezer to kind of firm up. I have found that stacking the cakes and decorating the cakes just makes it a lot easier when they are frozen rather than like room temperature. So I wrapped them up even when they're still hot to kind of trap in that moisture, threw them in the freezer, and then we're going to move on to the next thing. But I did want to provide some other type of treat, one in case there was extra frosting left over and I wanted to like decorate something with the extra frosting, but also in case someone didn't want the chocolate cake, they could have this other form of dessert. So I did make 12 brownies using some like Ghirardelli brownie mix. Honestly, I wish I could create like a from scratch equivalent, but the Ghirardelli brownie mix is by far the best brownies I have ever had. So I'm not even gonna try to create something on my own that matches that because, you know, if I'm gonna make something equivalent in taste, but it takes far more work, why would I do that? So anyways, I made some brownies and my plan or expectation was that I would have a lot of frosting left over and I could pipe like rosettes on top of the brownies to kind of give more of those flowers for the Isabella theme. But here you can see I have the Isabella Barbie and what I'm going to be doing is just kind of wrapping her in saran wrap from the waist down. And then once she is all wrapped up, I'm actually taking some of my circular cookie cutters and seeing what size like just goes over her hips. And then I'm choosing the size slightly smaller than that. And I will be cutting out a circle of that size from the center of each of my cakes so that the Barbie can fit inside the cakes when they are all stacked together. So now we're going to be making our buttercream frosting. My initial plan was to have chocolate frosting on the inside of the cake, so between each layer and for the crumb coat. And then I needed vanilla frosting for the final decoration, for the final layer, so that I could color it. So I'm not going to be dirtying up multiple bowls here. So I figured I would start with the vanilla frosting, so we're going to be making that vanilla buttercream first. And then using the dirty bowl, even with like some food coloring in it, 
we will be moving on to making the chocolate frosting since a little bit of purple food coloring is not going to make my chocolate any less brown. Now, if you've never tried making buttercream frosting, it is really simple and I have found it is way easier to work with than like buying store-bought frosting. In the past, maybe when I was like really young and you make a box cake and you buy the frosting that comes with it, that frosting, I don't know, it just, it doesn't decorate as easily. It doesn't, it's not as firm when you want to, you know, chill the cake and then take it out and you can just do a whole lot more with homemade buttercream. So the basic idea is that you beat butter, you like whip it up until it is pale in color. So you've incorporated a lot of air and then you just add in a bunch of powdered sugar really to your liking. Uh, there's a lot of wiggle room. I even have like a range on my recipe videos of like how much I use. And then you add some vanilla. If you're using unsalted butter, you can add a little bit of salt. And sometimes adding in heavy whipping cream makes it have a nice smooth consistency and just kind of makes it feel even more creamy. And then you can add food coloring. You can like add a bunch of stuff, but it's basically butter powdered sugar, and some flavoring, usually vanilla. So I really want to encourage you, if you've never made it like by yourself, give it a try. You might find that, you know, it is actually easier for you to work with when you're decorating cakes. And I haven't done this too often, but as like party season for me comes up, I might consider doing this is just making a whole bunch and freezing it and then taking out what I need, you know, cut, letting it get back to room temperature, whipping it up again, cut like putting in food coloring and decorating my cakes that way. For me, typically, like the birthdays start in September with Aubrey's birthday. And then two months later is Juan's birthday. And then two months later are Jack and my birthdays. And, you know, had I not had my miscarriage, it would have been two more months later and it would have been the baby Taylor's birthday. So you know, that was like birthday season for us. So when it comes to Aubrey's birthday, I think, you know, if I don't forget, I may just make like a, you know, quadruple batch of frosting and package it up in like cake portion sizes, like how much I would envision using for a cake and freezing that in like an airtight container and bringing it out when I need it. And you know, I'm done. I'm good. <laughs> I don't need to make any more dirty up my dishes. I just need to, you know, whip it up again with a hand mixer, add some food coloring, and we're good to go. But speaking of adding food coloring, I was struggling to really match the color of the dress for Isabella. I kind of felt like her dress was more of like a bluish purple than the purple that like my purple food coloring was giving. So I did add a little bit of blue food coloring and I don't show this on camera, but at one point I let my frosting kind of lay out on the counter and I went to dinner, came back and I was going to be ready to decorate and like the blue kind of like separated from the purple and rose to the top. So I was a little concerned, like what is my final cake going to look like? Because it's not going to be for like the immediate like hour following my decoration. It's actually, I prepared it like a week in advance and froze it. So I was a little concerned, but you guys will see the final product. It did kind of look bluish in the photos that I was sent because I actually wasn't able to attend the birthday party. But my mom did say that it really did look more purple than blue. So, you know, it worked out in the end. But I also took out a little bit of the vanilla frosting and made some pink frosting as well as a little bit of green frosting as well for the floral embellishments. And then later you will see that I dye some frosting that was like leftover. Maybe it was like leftover pink and purple mix. And I just made it like a darker blue and used that for decorating as well. So this is another little technique that I highly recommend is storing your buttercream or your homemade frosting in saran wrap and like rolling it up. It makes it a lot easier when you're decorating with a piping bag to like put it in, take it out, and you don't have to deal with as much mess. But anyways, we are moving on to making some chocolate frosting. Again, I'm using the same bowl. It's purple inside. It's not a big deal. I am essentially whipping up all of the same ingredients, but I'm also just adding some cocoa. 
Then we're going to be moving on to assembling this like tower of cakes with the centers missing. Like I said before, I took the size of cookie cutter that was one size smaller than the size that fit over Isabella's hips because I wanted her to be snug inside this tower of cakes and I didn't want her to be like flopping around. So I figured that the size that is just smaller than her hips will like, you know, keep her nice and firm in that cake. So after cutting out the centers of the cakes, I stack them on each other with just a layer of chocolate frosting in between. Typically, I would add some type of other filling like a chocolate ganache, but I figured it would be easier since we don't have that center of the cake to just do frosting. So after stacking up my five layers and the frosting, I inserted the Barbie and I did put a Ziploc bag over her head because she has so much hair and then like painters taped it tight to her body so that it'll be like out of the way for most of the decorating. But as you can see, the cake didn't go up like over her hips. It was just kind of sitting just under her hips. And I was slightly concerned about that. I felt like it wasn't going to give like a the dress look that I was going for. But then I realized that I could use the cake centers that I had cut out and kind of just place them around her hips. And that will give like a more A-line look to the dress anyways. And so it ended up working out. But I originally was hoping for that sixth layer to be a full, you know, cake size. Then I'm just adding frosting to kind of fill in the gaps. And I kind of just smoothed it out. We will be trimming it down a little bit more in a bit, but we're going to put it in the freezer first to firm up a little bit more. Once that buttercream has firmed up, we are going to just take a knife and shape this dress. Now here is where I feel like I could have done I don't know, a, a different job. Not necessarily better because I think it did turn out great, but I wanted it to be originally a little bit more of like an A-line dress. Like I wanted the sides not to go straight down, but down at an angle, but I also didn't want to shave off too much of the cake. So I think the next time I'll just have to make a double batch of my cake and then maybe make the bottom two layers of the, you know, the dress be an eight inch cake instead of a six inch so that I could then trim it off to make it a little bit more a line looking. But after I trimmed down the cake, I put it back in the freezer to firm up a bit before adding my purple frosting. I started off by just adding my purple buttercream, you know, covering the entire cake. And then I'm using a, a new tip for me at least to make little ruffles around different parts of the cake. The tip I'm using kind of looks like a raindrop and it can be used for ruffles or petals. But to make the ruffles, you actually want to rest the kind of bottom of the raindrop, the thicker part against the cake. And you're gonna like squeeze, not too soft. You, I think by squeezing more firmly, the frosting comes out of the thinner side and makes that ruffly look. And then you're just gonna go around the cake. And like I said, this was my first time doing this technique, not only for like a Barbie cake, but also just using this frosting technique. And I'm excited to, you know, maybe give it another try in the future, maybe just do like a whole ruffle cake where it's ruffle on ruffle on ruffle all the way up to the top of the cake. I think that would, you know, be really pretty. And it was fun to, you know, kind of start to get the hang of this technique. Once my ruffles were done, I did move on to piping on some flowers. My initial attempt at making little pink like roses or whatever on the cake weren't that great. Um, they, they just didn't come out the way I was looking for, so I'll scrape them off in a bit. And I'm going to be replacing them with just the using the same tip, but I have to squeeze the piping bag quick and firm to get kind of like petals kind of coming out. Um, so that they don't, I don't know, look look bad. Like I realized that the technique, I was trying to be careful and squeezing it out slowly because I didn't want to mess it up. But actually squeezing it out slowly caused me to make an ugly flower, if that makes any sense. So I needed that pressure from the piping bag to squirt the frosting out 
you know, firmly so that it would have a petal look. And then I was going to put little sprinkle balls from a pack from Walmart in the centers of my flowers to kind of finish off the floral look. I did a similar technique with my green frosting, but I did use a different piping tip. And again, you have to squeeze, you know, firm and quick. And just, you know, depending on how long you continue to squeeze firmly and quickly will determine the size of your flower. Um, but also the size of the tip does affect how your flower will end up looking. After my flowers with the sprinkles were completed, I did go back and try to make other little tiny flowers that were not going to have any sprinkles to kind of fill in some of the empty space and just bring a whole lot more flowers to the Isabella cake. I then stuck this cake in the freezer to kind of firm up a little bit more before moving on to one of the final decorations. To finish off the cake, I did have to remove the Ziploc bag with the painter's tape so that I could decorate around the saran wrap that was covering Isabella's waist. And I decided to go in with a couple more ruffles as well as some blue frosting flowers. This frosting, again, was just kind of the remaining or extra frosting that I had left over mixed with a deeper, darker blue food coloring. And I just kind of put little like starred dollops of this blue throughout the dress as well. Now, towards the beginning of the video, I mentioned I anticipated having a lot of frosting left over and I was going to decorate these brownies that I had made with like lots of big roses well, I really didn't have that much frosting left over, that's still something I am trying to learn is like just how much I actually need to make for a cake or for cupcakes. I haven't quite paid attention to that. I've just kind of focused on like, let's just make this cake and decorate it. But anyways, I underestimated how much frosting I would have. But I figured since the brownies are super decadent and rich, that just a little floral, you know, decor with the remaining frosting would do. So I stuck all of these treats in my freezer because the party wasn't going to be for like another week. And then I did meet up with my brother and sister-in-law to deliver the cake using one of the boxes that I had gotten in a video a long time ago. I did find these like wall stickers at Dollar Tree, which I thought would be cute to decorate the box. But because I only bought one, I thought I would give it to my niece instead and let her decorate her room with the stickers. But had I thought of this idea before, I would have picked up a second set of stickers to kind of decorate the box just to, you know, bring some extra theme to the case that I was transporting the cake in. But here you can see my sweet niece at her birthday party. To me, the cake in this photo, it kind of gives a little bit more of a blue vibe. And that could be because of the blue frosting and how it separated a little bit from the purple. But my mom, again, did say in person, this cake looked more purple than blue. So overall, you know, I'm pleased with it. It was really fun to do and a good learning experience. And everyone enjoyed the cake as well. If you guys like this video, or learn something new or am, are starting to gain the confidence to make some frosting on your own, go ahead and hit that like button. And if you guys are new here, I would love it if you stick around and subscribe. Like I said, I do a lot of like parties and baking, especially starting in September. That's like party season for me. So go ahead and hit that subscribe button so you can stick around to catch my birthday parties, my baking, but also just all of my motherhood content. And I'll catch you in the next one. to the end of the video. If you didn't know already, every Monday and Friday, you can find motherhood and lifestyle content on this channel. And since us moms have to do it all, that may mean yummy recipes, easy DIYs, mom hacks, cleaning and organization, or just a combo of everything. Please know that you are loved and you are made for greatness, and I will catch you in the next one.